Hi, welcome to the last video in this series where I'm looking at showing how to use these identities, often referred to as the harmonic form. And I'm assuming that you've watched the previous videos where I've shown you how we derive these results here. And in this video, it's going to be much the same, where I'm going to be looking at using this last identity, a cos x minus b sin x is identical to r cos x plus alpha. So here's the typical question that you can expect. And if you've watched the previous videos in this series, by now you most probably will have no problem in doing this one. But I'll take you through it anyway. We've got here to express 5 cos x minus 3 sin x in the form r cos x plus alpha, where r is greater than 0 and alpha is an acute angle between 0 and 90 degrees. Now if you'd like to have a go at this and haven't done so already, just give you a moment to pause the video. When you come back, I'll take you slowly through the work solution or you might just want to fast forward and check the final results. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. Well, with this one, because we've got to express it in the form R cos of x plus alpha, then we're looking at this identity here and we can see that we've got A cos x minus B sin x is identical then to this expression here. And we can see that the A must be the 5, which is the coefficient of cos x. And take care here, the coefficient of sin x, the b value, is 3, not minus 3, because the minus here corresponds with the minus here, so b is just the 3. a and b will always be positive values. So let's just put it down here that a would equal the 5 and b would equal the 3. So in order to get r, assuming this result here, then r is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. So therefore we've got r is equal to the square root of 5 squared plus 3 squared. So you've got 25 plus 9, which is 34. So you've got the square root of 34, which is not a nice value, so I'll just leave it as the root of 34. Notice it's not plus or minus. Remember, r is a positive value. As for alpha, alpha equals the inverse tan of b divided by a. And b is 3, a is 5, so it's the inverse tan of 3 fifths. Make sure your calculator's in degrees mode, because we're working with degrees. And if that's the case, you should find you get 30 0.96 and so on degrees. And rounding this to say one decimal place, that would be 31.0 degrees to one decimal place, one dp for short. So in summary, what we've got then is that 5 cosine x minus 3 sine x, we'll just write it down here, so put therefore 5 cosine of x minus 3 sine x is identical to r cos of x plus alpha. But we've already worked out what r is. It was root 34, so that's identical to root 34 multiplied by the cosine of x plus alpha. Alpha is the 31 point naught there, okay, 31 point naught put that in brackets and say it's in degrees. Okay, so that's the quick way of doing that question, but we could prove this result and work this out just by doing it through first principles. So if that's the case, what we do is we take what we're given here, r cos of x plus alpha, and as I say, if you've been watching the previous videos in this series, you'll know that it's all exactly the same kind of method. So uh, we'll just run through it again. Okay, R cos of x plus alpha, it's identical to R being multiplied by the expansion of the cosine of x plus alpha. 
And to do that, you've got to remember this identity here, the cosine of a plus b was identical to the cosine of a times cosine of b minus sine of a times sine of b, where in this example, a is the x and b is the alpha. So expanding this gives us r times all of cosine of x, cosine of alpha. Then it's going to be minus the sine of x multiplied by the sine of alpha. So just remove that identity so we can carry on. And expanding the bracket gives us r cos x cos alpha. But I'm going to rearrange that to r cos alpha times cos of x. And then we would get minus r sine x sine alpha. And if I rearrange that, we'll give it as r sine alpha multiplied by sine of x. And this takes on the form that we want. a cos x minus another constant, which we'll call b, times the sine of x. And if we compare coefficients of cos x, you can see that r cos alpha compares with the a. And when it comes to comparing the coefficient of sine x, we've got r sine alpha compares with that b there. OK, now we're going to need to work out what r and alpha are. And to do that, what we do is we look at the coefficients of cos x and sin x. So I'm going to just write down here a note, OK, where we say we're comparing coefficients, OK, coefficients of, and we'll start with the coefficient of sine x. It's a lot easier to work with that one first. So if we compare coefficients of sine x, you can see you've got r sine alpha compares with that b there. So r sine alpha is equal to b. And if we look at the coefficients of cosine of x, then you'll see you've got r cos alpha compares with that a there. So r cos of alpha equals a. And what we do is we solve these two equations simultaneously. So we'll put down them as 1 and 2. And what we do is we do equation 1 divided by equation 2 and see what that gives us. And uh, if we do that, the r's cancel one another out. And you're left with sine alpha divided by cosine of alpha, which is the tan of angle alpha. And that's going to be equal to b divided by a. So you've got b divided by a. And if we take the inverse tan of both sides, you end up with alpha equaling the inverse tan of b over a, which is the result that we needed to show here. So that's good news. And uh, let's just border this off here, give ourselves some space to do more calculations in. So uh, come down here. And in order to work out what r is, all we do is we do equation 1 squared, and we add it to equation 2 squared. And we'll see what that gives us. Well, if we do equation 1 squared, that's going to be r squared sine squared alpha. And add it to equation 2 squared, that's going to be added to r squared cos squared alpha. I can pull out r squared as a common factor. So we end up with r squared bracket sine squared alpha okay, plus cos squared alpha. And that's going to be equal to b squared plus a squared b squared plus a squared. And we should be familiar with the identity sine squared alpha plus cos squared alpha. That's identical to 1. So you've got r squared times 1, which is just going to be r squared. So you've got r squared equals b squared plus a squared, which I'm going to write as a squared plus b squared. And then if we take the square root to both sides, you end up with r equaling the square root then of 
a squared plus b squared. And it's not plus or minus. Remember, r is a positive value. And that proves the result that we've got up here. So by learning these results for any of these identities here, it's a lot quicker just to work through this method like you see here. Other than that, you'd have to do it through first principles. So I hope that's given you an idea then throughout this series of how we go about working with these kind of identities, the harmonic form then.